Welcome back. I bet a lot of you guys probably have an entire refrigerator dedicated to seeds. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about... Where are they? No, that's not the one. We're going to talk about this. See this? This right here. That's the thing we're going to talk about after the fountain. I was really clever. I recycled. I went dumpster diving for poinsettias that were thrown out after Christmas. Because in the bottom of each poinsettia plant, which is a pretty much a useless plant other than being pretty, they, there's dirt. Look at this potting soil. You know how much potting soil costs? <laughs> I got like 30 of these. I wish I could have cleaned out some giant national mall full of poinsettias or something, but you know, we do what we can. Right here, we have some old rotten peanut waste material. And then over here, we have a bunch of rotten pine material. And this is how we mix up our really inexpensive potting soil. So what we have right here is a baggie that is full of sprouting Prunus Americana, American plum pits that we planted. I actually broke them out of their shells, so it was just the kernels, and we stuck them in the refrigerator from about the beginning of September. And now we are going to pot them up. Look at all these sprouts. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to get a lot more pots. This method of sprouting seeds it's called stratifying. What you do is you, like I said, you take your little seeds and you stick them in the refrigerator and you wait and they actually have sprouted in the refrigerator. You saw me pull them out of the fridge. So these little guys are ready to roll and I gotta plant them now before the roots all tangle up inside of here and we end up with a mess. You can actually see how the, they're trying to sprout off the tops. Come out of here. No, not now, come on. No. Go chase a stick or something. Nursery dog. I'm very excited about these American plums. They were growing alongside the road. I got some pictures of them. Man, look at those things. They were just absolutely loaded. I was outside of, uh, right on the border of Tennessee, north of Memphis, and we came across a big stand of them. Now I'm just gonna have to stick these somewhere else. And I got a whole bunch of fruits, brought them home, my wife made jam out of them. Kids ate a lot of them fresh. They were sweet and a little bit tart. Very nice little plums. And they just made this huge thicket of plums. Totally ridiculous. So I thought, you know what? That's got to be something we put in our food forest. I know we're a little further south than the ideal range, but I looked up the range and yeah, they can grow here. So we're going to try it. They were so vigorous and productive. I thought, well, Give it a try. Holy moly, I think almost every one of these sprouted. If you haven't done this before where you just take a pit and pop it open and stick it in the refrigerator, this is a really, really good way to get fruit trees for free, particularly stone fruits because they grow quite quickly. We have done this with plums, pluots, peaches, and then of course with wild plums. It also works with cherries. 
you just stick them in the fridge. Crack them open, stick them in the fridge. It's really easy. I have a video on it. It's one of my more popular videos. And then uh, two or three years, sometimes they can fruit. Usually they fruit within four or five very, very quickly, particularly peaches. We had one bloom within uh, 18 months. That, that's quick. 18 months from seed to bloom. We're talking almost no juvenile period. The top right there, that's the, that's the new tree trying to grow up. That's the root growing down. This is after beginning of September. Now it is mid-January, so beginning of September. I cracked open, took the outside off of these. I actually did it with a hammer on the porch. You just gotta restrain your blows a little bit. Cracked them open, stuck the kernels in some slightly damp peat moss, stuck them in the refrigerator, and they just sat in the fridge. That's it. And when they start growing roots out like this, I know it's time to pot them up. And at this time of year, because it's still swinging back and forth between freezing and not freezing, I'm going to stick them in my greenhouse once I pot them up so I don't inadvertently freeze the tops of them off because they've been growing at above freezing temperatures. So we've got them to sprout that way, but we don't want to expose them to too much stress right off the bat. But think about it. See that? Right there, that's a potential of thousands of fruit for decades. And we have an entire bag full of them. Each one of these is a huge amount of potential. And when people tell you, oh, you shouldn't start fruit trees from seed, there are a lot of fruit trees that it makes sense to start from seed that work well with uh, plums and peaches being very obvious examples. The reason you're often told not to plant fruit trees from seed is because they really are out to get you. They really don't like you. They. They don't want you to grow your own food. They certainly don't want you to do it for cheap. Well, that may be one reason, but really I think the most common reason uh, that they say not to grow fruit trees from seed is because you don't know exactly what you're going to get. And this is, uh, you know, what are, those, what are those things? If you plant it, you're gonna get something gross. It's gonna be terrible. Well, Stephen Edholm at the Skill Cult YouTube channel has proven that wrong with apples. He's grown his own apples from seeds and is breeding new varieties and he's gotten good results, edible fruit, not just coming out with a whole bunch of crab apples off the bat, but actually coming out with good edible apples off the bat. And I have done it with peaches. I've planted many, many peaches and every peach tree that we went back and tried fruit from, yes, there was some variation in the way the fruit looked and the size of the fruit, but they were all good edible fruit. There wasn't one fruit that we were like, this is terrible. Why did we grow this thing? So uh, there is some variation, but that's fine. Humans have variation too. We don't want clones exactly the same all over the place. And you know, if you were doing a commercial orchard and you want everything to be exactly the same thing, like you have a contract to grow pink lady apples, for example, you want just grafted pink lady apple trees over and over and over again. In the case of a backyard orchard, well, play around. That's what our ancestors did. How do you think they started them? They did do some grafting, but they often grew a lot of things from seed just to see what would happen. I visited uh, my uncle Stewart's property in North Carolina once. There was a peach tree that grew off of the back porch of the cabin there in North Carolina, and it, it, it had peaches all over it, and they were good peaches. How did that get there? Somebody threw a peach pit off the porch, right? Somebody didn't go out and pay $35.99 for a peach tree from Lowe's and plant it out there. Somebody threw a pit that's free. And if you deliberately choose to do it, I mean, look, if you get a bad fruit, even if you, you know, you don't win the genetic lottery on one of them, we'll cut it down or graft something else on top of it. No big deal. It's, I just don't, I don't see the reticence that people have for this. I guess one of the other reasons is, you know, some, some varieties do take a long time. Like if you wanted apples from seed, it might take you eight years to get a fruit. Okay, maybe you don't want to wait that long. That's fine. Go ahead, get a grafted one or graft your own on a root stock or however complicated you want to get. Um, if you have mulberries, it can take a long time. But really, if you've got a little bit of time, and particularly with these stone fruit, it's so fast. Just do it. 
I mean, it's going to take the same amount of time for your grafted one to make you much of anything. It takes a few years to really get established. I found seedlings, when you put them in the ground early, they get established really fast and really healthy and really quickly. Plant them when they're like a foot tall in the ground or even just plant pits in the fall out in your yard and put some little rocks around them so you know where they are. The establishment of those rootstocks is awesome. So just something to think about. That's how you start your own stone fruit pits. In this case, plums. Starting plums from pits, super easy. A handful of them is an entire orchard and you don't pay anything for them, especially if you pick them by the side of the road. People are gonna throw the pits out anyways, so just go for it. Anyhow, a little bit of encouragement today. I'm gonna go out and pot the rest of these before it gets dark. Thanks for joining me. Catch you all next time. Uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters. I much appreciate you guys joining up. Uh, on the Patreon page now, I am putting up exclusive content that doesn't really fit on YouTube, like our chicken butchering, one hour redneck chicken butchering video. I put up uh, both of the Bephemus, the most recent Bephemus movies, terrifying, terrifying movies, ter absolutely terrifying, horrifying movies that we can't really put on YouTube because they're so terrifying, incredibly terrifying. But anyhow, so we're putting more on there. So thank you to our patrons for supporting that. It gives us an alternative platform as well. And uh, be sure to join us in North Central Florida if you are in the area because we are doing a spring good gardening super class. I'm giving three talks at the Scrubland Farms Nursery. I hope to see you there. I'll put a link to that below as well. That is on February 17th. Thanks for joining me. Catch you next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. Your thumbs always be green, even if your life is the pits, plum, plum pits. <laughs>